Hi guys, my name is Borro Dante and welcome back to Overpaint. Today's patient is Lowstar. I don't think Lowstar was ever on the show, but I remember them too well. I think because they just submitted so much artwork to the feed, which is great. Hey bro Dante, yo, sick of me yet? I'm sorry, I keep doing more arts and deciding that no, it's this one I want overpainted. Oh, oh wow, that, there's a lot of text here. Okay, I'm gonna read it silently and... Oh, that never-ending story, I see. Yeah, I don't even think I ever saw the movie or whatever, maybe it's bigger than just a movie, but never saw like the whole thing. These are the characters, I see. Some sad stuff went down during that story. Yeah, it was so little, I just watched some scenes. I remember the flying talking dog, it was very trippy. Other than that, I don't know anything, so there's this hill in the back that is more Morla, I, I don't know any of that. <laughs> but the scene just speaks for itself, I mean, the drama is quite on the nose. And you don't really have to know the franchise, so that's pretty awesome. So also, a character named Gmork attacks shortly after the scene. Why not paint him within the shadows of a hollow fallen tree? So there's the guy. Maybe a panther of sorts. So, pretty much most of the message is Lost are asking for advice about how to deal with the situation when you're an artist who tries to get more popular, get more followers, but just has no feedback. And here, I don't want my passion to turn into some numbers game either. How do you balance it? What insight could you offer? What is the most satisfying method to roast a person asking for a free art commission and and admonish you when politely decline. Postscriptum, shameless self-promo. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch, Art of Lostar. All right, so on your question, really, it's hard to tell. Like, if you struggle with this, with the fact that you don't have enough followers or whatever, then you will keep struggling. Like, I, there's nothing I can say that will fix that. I think it's just a huge problem of the situation in which artists are these days. Like on one hand, social network gives you access to the public and you can easily promote your own artwork. But really, if everyone has the promotion tools, no one has the promotion tools because it's just too many of us and no one is visible really. It's really hard to get yourself some popularity when there are millions just like you out there. So really, you have a couple of options. Number one is the one that has probably already been tried, but it just doesn't work with your psychology or whatever. It's don't bother with the numbers and try to impress yourself. Do better than you did yesterday and just concentrate on that. Keep in mind that there are just so many people and unless you're like amazing, no one will see you anyway. I'm not amazing, I'm just a YouTuber, and I do the kind of videos that no one else really does, that's why I get my popularity. If I would be just on Instagram, I would have less than a thousand followers and that's it. I'm no special of an artist, despite how many people can disagree with that, those people wouldn't even be here if not for YouTube. So unless you're like super amazing, not just in the skill level with understanding of lighting or something, but with just ability to create something beautiful on this scale, you know, something that I'm really trying to push lately with my artwork, trying to solve the abstraction on this scale. This scale is super important. Overall, like all the artists always were saying that this is an important thing. If you can solve the picture on a small scale, it's gonna be really good on a bigger scale as well and then it makes sense to add all the detail. Today it has even more sense to follow that rule because your artwork will always first be seen in a thumbnail like this wherever you post it. People will have to click on the thumbnail to see your artwork. If it's not impressive like this, I guess in this episode we could actually concentrate our efforts on making the thumbnail picture much more attractive, something that would make people click. And this is like such a golden rule that on one hand you're really trying to improve your social network game, but at the same time this is a direct and perfect and no compromise direction to actually improve your skill as an artist. 
This is a very good coincidence that artists today need to work on their thumbnails. This is so important and kind of fortunate if you know about it. So that's super important. And yeah, um, we'll do this. I think we'll concentrate on the thumbnailing of this picture. But another thing I'm gonna mention, another tool to make your artwork more popular on networks is, if not for the beauty part, then more of the meme value in a way. More trendy and ironic, fun kind of content. Much simpler maybe, you know? Webcomic artists, they don't need to draw well at all, yet their piece are way more popular than most of ours so you can kind of balance that out find the perfect kind of thing look at your artwork with the eyes of someone else just browsing through millions of these amazing pictures why would they stick with yours why would they click on your thumbnail at all what exactly is the value there uh, you know like they're not in a gallery they're at home maybe on a the toilet. They just want to have fun, so deliver that. Even maybe just for a while to bump up the numbers or something. So yeah, uh, pretty much what I'm saying, look through the eyes of the viewer that is gonna find your artwork on the social network. How will they really do it? How you find new artwork on that same social network? Say Instagram. How do you find new people? Very rarely you would just stumble upon an artwork, because all you see in your feed on Instagram is your own subscriptions, the people that you follow. How do you meet a new person? Think about that and try to catch their attention through those channels. As far as I know, the best way to increase your numbers on Instagram is to like other people's artwork. That's the best way to show them that you exist on the network at all. Otherwise, how will they ever find you? Yeah. That went not off topic, this is what you asked for, but that's not overpainting. Let's start the painting part. So, the thumbnailing, let's see. If I zoom out, what happens? I kind of see the person, by the way, I was super convinced that this was a, a girl. I was kind of confused with this part, but really didn't even... How do they say it slipped my mind that this could be a guy? I don't know, it's something about the face and maybe the haircut. I'm not even sure what to do about that, we'll see later. Right now we really need to concentrate on the thumbnail. So, in this thumbnail I kind of see the person, let's just say that, the person. And the rest, this part, is just... I can't really see the horse, it's not really here. The contrast is eating it away, like something's wrong. Look at this picture, right? This is some kind of promotional poster kind of thing with this character. The white horse is on a darker background, that's why we can see it so well. And the guy is white, so that works out. Let's look up the actual place, Swamp of Sadness. There we go, you see? Like, let's look at the horse. The horse is white, while the swamp is black. There we go, that's our solution. We need to highlight the horse so it would be visible. The horse is much wider and the swamp is much darker. And in here, both of them are just like middle violet-ish gray. And that's working against us. We kind of lose the horse. So let's find the horse. Oh man, this is so sad. I know what Nadia and I are watching today. So yeah, let's do that. Let's drop some, some new colors. It will probably mess up everything about the details, but we have to do this. Oh my god, look at that. Just the whiteness of the horse already looks pretty, even though I didn't really add any details. It's just so beautifully white. That's racist. 
But yeah, like, look at the pictures from the movie, right? The horse is incredibly white. In many shots right here, it's like blown out in the upper area because that's how white it is. It's actually white. So why not make the same thing with our artwork right here? This is like the beautiful part of this shot in the movie that the swamp is so black and the horse is so white and like blackness is taking over the whiteness. This is the aesthetic part that makes this shot so striking. If this would be a brown horse, wouldn't care much, but this is... Okay, I'm really saying things that may be interpreted very wrong. I mean just the colors, I st aesthetically, in the shot, they, they work like that. Contrast attracts more. Brown lives matter. He's Ukrainian, he doesn't know better. If it would be a brown horse, it would work better with the white swamp, maybe. I should stop. Whatever this is, it's in the reference. I don't know how these things on horses go. I'm sure there are different kinds. Alright, something like that. By the way, with the horse white like that, we can actually make the background bright again. Look, I literally inverted the image. It was darker than the background, now it's brighter than the background. This horse is definitely here, and it's so gloriously white in this dramatic scene. So we could make the swamp a bit brighter, like the sky, it was much brighter, maybe we can do it, but I mean, not necessary at all. The kid's hair, it's not that red, kinda bothering me, it looks like he has a hair dye going on. The shadow underneath the chin should definitely be much deeper, otherwise you don't really believe that he's a real person when there's a lack of contrast. Look at the kid's face in the reference. His nose and upper side of the cheeks are very bright because they're facing upwards. There we go, having some legit feeling of reflection. Added reflection here because the horse is going like this, I'm mirroring that here. Reflecting the sky, it's always brighter, even though the horse is white, the sky out there where we're not looking, it's even brighter somewhere out there. Even in here, like, comparing to the shadow part, it's way brighter. <laughs> Alright, fixed up the kid a bit. 
didn't go too much into the anatomy details because this is me and also just because there are much bigger things to fix in this picture like the global lighting and of course the contrast that we talked about this whole episode let's make the face of that jafar or whatever his name is a bit more noticeable i think i darkened it when i did the darkening of the whole picture so he's over there in this aerial perspective okay i'm gonna make the kid like this a bit less red because there's something really weird about that. Like, I made the whole picture a bit less purple. It was all purple, so the kid kind of looked better. Also, I kind of solved why he was kind of looking like a female more. Strong shadows in these areas, they kind of look like makeup. Also, pretty massive cheeks, especially the further one, this one. I made it a bit slimmer. And the shape of the nose, it was really pressed into the face i made it stick out a bit that's not why he was looking a bit like a girl but that helps improve the face a bit i'm not sure if i all the way made it only better maybe some parts became worse so yeah this wrinkle the crying wrinkle it goes over the nostril that's how it works if we look at it it's always like on top of the nostril so make sure you do that when someone's crying. <laughs> well, it was kind of like that. It was just a bit too messy in a way. Like more attention to the lighting, like something facing upwards should be brighter, something facing downwards should be darker. It makes a bit more sense out of the geometry. Things look a bit cleaner while also more realistic maybe. So that's what I do for the drops. I make the darker shape, then I grab the background, erase the center downer area like this, and then add a few accurate highlights. And that's a drop right there. So yeah, I guess this is it. I think now it may be a much more clickable picture. What do you guys think? Also, we can repeat something that Lost Art may have done, like we can color correct the picture a bit. So shadows would be cooler, highlights would be a bit more yellow, midtones a bit more red, like this. That's really optional, I don't know, you can do this on Instagram really. So yeah, this is it. This is what we've got. The kid lost a few pounds on the face, apparently. The hair looks actually black with actual reflection of the skylight. Especially on the top of the head, there's nice reflection following the geometry of the hairstyle. And the horse is freaking amazing. By the way, what are these scars? Is this just uh, like the kid put his hand on the nose of the horse before and now there's a mark? Well, I'm gonna keep it like this, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, this is it. Thank you, Lost Art, for your submission. This was a lot of fun, an interesting scene to paint over, to fix the global look of the picture was interesting. Wish you all the luck with your social network adventures. Make sure to pay attention to the, the way the picture looks like when you zoom out a lot. If things look the way they are actually supposed to look like. And yeah, look for a good contrast, nice colors, nice ambience. If any of you guys want me to overpaint your picture like this, the link to my Patreon page is in the end of this video. You become my patron, submit the picture with a message, I read the message and overpaint the picture. But for now, I thank you for watching if you did, I guess I did if you're here. Love a like and subscribe, tell a friend. Don't take your horse to the swamp, do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one. Bye! Man, with this darker, cyan, heavy gamma, this looks so heavy. This was a bit more flowery and nice, and this is war!